We've been asked to show some of the differences in technology on two real common systems that's used in the, uh, the painting or the PBE industry. This is our Tsunami Regenerative dryer, dryer. This is our new version of it. It's rated at 10 horsepower. It's generally designed where you can run up to two booths or two prep areas. This particular product right here is typically found on like a one booth application and one of these would be used on each, each spray booth. And some of the main differences in, in designs are the, the, the plumbing. We come in in one direction here, we have an inlet, we come in, we come through the dryer, we can come out the outlet and keep going in a straight direction. If you need to re-plumb it and you need to just go in that same direction, you can still very easily plumb in piping from this direction. Coming out one of these outlet ports, you can plumb in and go right out the same direction or you can put an elbow and go up or go down as needed. So it's very, very easy to plumb. The, the plumbing style on here, um, it's smaller, it's about three quarter inch MPT, where we're at a one inch MPT. As you flow through here, the air flows through the dryer, comes up through these towers, comes back through these fittings, comes up through a regulator, and then it goes out to another filter. So you're, you're having different heights, so your plumbing may become a little bit more of an issue in trying to plumb that. They are totally sold as a system where you have your filtration here, you have your after filtration there, and we have our filtration right here. Uh, some of the differences in our filtration are the size of the filters. This is our standard Tsunami filter. And I'm going to compare this to the type filter size that's here. This is the water separating filter here. So you can kind of see the difference in size and capacity our standard filter has over this type technology. Other things that happen is if you look down in there, what you're going to see is you're going to see a float drain that sits at the bottom of that bowl. So any garbage normally hits your first stage filter first, and that's generally where you have most issues with your float drain. And float drains, just as in some of our other products, float drain, it's not a matter of if it'll fail, it's just a matter of when it'll fail. The differences that we have for our drains is we use our moisture minder drain here. These are bulletproof drains. They're made of stainless steel, anodized aluminum. There's a piston, and it gets a pilot si signal from inside the, um, the PLC box here. But this is the exact same drain that many of the largest compressor manufacturers in the world install standard on their reciprocating compressors from the factory. So it's a bulletproof drain. We even take that one stage further, is on the bottom of our filters, we actually put a strainer assembly, a self-cleaning strainer assembly. So if there is any garbage that gets down in there, rust and debris, pipe scale, pipe dope, Teflon tape, that comes into the strainer right here. And what we can do is periodically, if you open that up, you can blow that out. So you don't have to disassemble anything to clean anything out. So it's a self-cleaning strainer. The first stage filter here then goes into a second stage filter, and that's a coalescing filter. And the differences here are on this coalescing filter. The drain in here, on many systems out there, are basically a manual petcock. So you have to rely on servicing this manually. So as you're collecting the oils and you're filtering the particulate out, mainly for oils, your oils drip down to the bottom and you need to manually drain that. Our standard filter here, if you look at the size of this element compared to this element here, this is our coalescing replacement element. Again, self-cleaning strainer at the bottom, and we have another moisture minder drain valve to drain the condensate and oil that, that comes out of the bottom of there. This particular unit here, this has another filter. This is an after filter, and what this filter is, is used for is to capture desiccant dust from, from the systems here. So you can kind of see the type, the type particulate that, that this downstream filter, it, it works very well for capturing that dust, but you have to have that other filter in there with, with that type media. The reason why there's desiccant dust in there is most of the type desiccants that's used in the industry, they're put in here and they're loose. So those beads will just move around. The beads we use in here, it's a molecular sieve. It's this very, very small diameter bead here. And then what we do is we put these beads under extreme compression. We put a 10 micron filter bag around there. So there is nothing that moves in there. Those beads are all under super tight compression 
with that big heavy duty spring in there. So we don't get those beads fluctuating and moving every time that this pressurizes and depressurizes. So we don't get that dust carryover as in a lot of the technology in, in, in uh, dryers in the marketplace. The other thing is when it becomes time to service these is to take this and put new media in here, you basically have to unplumb, you have to unscrew pipe fittings and change your plumbing, take these fittings off here, then you gotta take these canisters and you can try to dump all that media out there, then you gotta put new media in. When it does come time to change the filters here, all we do is spin them off. Approximately three years service life is what we have on our filters. And when you're done, you just spin a new one right back on and you can change your filters within about three minutes for changing your filters. One of the other unique features of it is we've designed our system so it's modular and expandable. So example, if we need to go from a 10 horsepower and your, your shop grows and you need more, we can expand this in the field to a 15 by taking another module and bolting it on here. If we need to go to a 20, we can bolt another module on. We set up our PLCs at the factory so we have multiple programs in there so we can field change this unit here if you need to add other modules in there. So the system's the only system in the marketplace right now that's totally expandable out in the field.